I posed a question on last night's show. Is political correct madness here to stay? Is the ideological capture of our great institutions and corporations irreversible? In short, has woke won? Well, when I put this to my brilliant pundits, there was a pause more pregnant than a South London teenager. Well, let me tell you, the answer is yes. Because history has taught us that the truth, common sense and reality are an insuperable force. And the twisted and toxic ideology of wokeism doesn't bear any serious scrutiny. Whether it's the economy, race relations, border control, human biology, what to teach children, or the loaded interpretation of our history, it's all based on mythology, lies, invented realities, and feelings rather than facts. All of it is leveraged to irreversibly change our country. Ultimately, it's cultural communism. With dark echoes of the Soviet Union and other despotic regimes, it involves crushing free speech, stifling debate, and shaming people for not following its religious scripture. It involves censorship, it involves gaslighting, it involves silencing people and seeking to destroy their lives. Wokeism is tyranny. It is bullying on a societal, corporate and administrative level. But remember what your mum and dad told you when you were growing up. What's the best way to handle a bully? You stand up to them. The reason why these censorious thugs who have mangled our language with pronouns, rewritten classic books and labelled women as birthing humans have had so much success is because of fear. People are afraid to speak out for fear of the consequences. People understandably want a quiet life. But in doing so, the siren voices of wokeism only get louder. Accepting that women have a penis is just the beginning. All of us are guilty of complying with this wave of wokeism because we want it to end. But our compliance means it never will. Which is why Nigel Farage has set a magnificent example in standing up to a bank who ludicrously cancelled his account for backing Brexit and for having the wrong political opinions. Political opinions shared by millions. Thanks to his courage, Coots are now running scared with a grovelling apology from the group's chief executive and with the delicious possibility that Nigel could sue them for millions for discrimination and the alleged disclosing of confidential details. Maya Forstatter, an ordinary woman who lost her job for saying that there are two biological sexes. Through a gruelling legal process, she won her case for unfair dismissal. Bud Light in America have seen their share price collapse for calling their customers chauvinistic dinosaurs and inflicting on them a bloke in a dress who mocks women as the brand's new face. Also, boring woke films, many courtesy of the once great Walt Disney Company, are tanking at the box office. Meanwhile, real comedy, like Ricky Gervais, is flying off the shelves. Why? Because people want to have a laugh, and they're sick of this stifling political correctness. What a hilarious irony that one particular reviewer of Ricky's show, from the Irish independent newspaper, complained about Gervais's un-PC jokes. In a classic example of how the media elites are so out of touch with public opinion, the headline reads as follows. Ricky Gervais in Dublin. Intolerant. Nasty. Grossly offensive. And 11,000 people laugh along. 11,000 bigots, eh? That's a lot of bigots. Pity this one woke journalist in the crowd with a face like a bulldog chewing a wasp. He goes on to write in the article, Gervais made jokes about homeless people, illegal immigrants and inefficient children working in third world slave labour sweatshops. The reviewer is furious, but his vast audience is furiously laughing and Gervais is laughing all the way to the bank. The disconnect now between the public and the corporate media and political elite is vast, which is why GB News is growing so robustly. And I'm delighted to say, thanks to you, I'm normally beating Sky News about now. It's time to defeat the woke Taliban by voting with our feet, voting with our wallet and voting in the ballot box. It's time to cancel cancel culture and wipe out wokeism once and for all. 
The raw war on woke is absolutely no joke.